The idea behind Wing Chun is it is a close quarter effective system. We train without the gloves on. So as we'll see, it takes a tremendous amount of control to be able to train at speed and to work with an opponent and to work safely. One of the prime aspects of training in any martial art is respect. And obviously, you can't train hard with a person that has no respect for your health or if you don't respect their health. They come to you healthy, they want to leave healthier and they want to leave more skillful. You're also going to be seeing an example of one of our gradings. You'll see uh, Steve Hazel of our Maystone branch going for intermediate level grading. In this grading, what we're doing is concentrating on the basic hand skills. In Wing Chun, you may well have heard of, this, of the method of training called Chi Sao, and you may obviously, everyone knows of sparring. But a lot of people try to spar and they train for years and years in sparring, and they find it very hard to improve and they come to brick walls. Well, in Wing Chun, we have the, our forms, like every other style has cards and patterns, and then we have Chi Sao, and this is our link between our forms and our free sparring. What we're trying to do is develop a training program which we hope is modern, uh, objective and sensible and is going to be very, very, very progressive as well. And what we're finding is that we're developing students' ability to see shapes, see techniques, recognise on which gate, in which position they are relative to their opponent. From that kind of position, they can then try to transfer this across to sparring. So in this third level grading that you see today, you'll see the elements that we're trying to take across into sparring. So what we're trying to do is have these weapons, take these tools. There is no point in getting into a fight if you've got nothing to fight with or something to fight for. At the end of the day, somebody will fight with no ability if they've got something to fight for. But it's far more, far better to go into a situation now you've got something to fight with too. And this is a very important aspect of martial art training. Part of the philosophy of training is that you always remain common sense and always remain true to yourself in that respect. The other thing you're going to be seeing is just a little bit of body conditioning because at the end of the day if you're not fit then you're not fit enough to run away from that fight let alone face that situation and I think you have to be objective and sensible and realise that in any situation if you couldn't deal with that then you should have got away and no matter how much training you've got you'll always try to get away. You are human, you can make a mistake. You make a mistake in a fight, it's a painful process. You make a mistake in your everyday life, we can live with it, we can get over it. In a fighting situation you may not. So you always have this objectivity and this sensibility when you face and confront a situation. Always try to get yourself away from it. But bar that, you also have to understand that these mistakes may not be to the fact that you actually get beaten, but you may well get hit. You'll limit the danger to your head. Nobody can contrain their brain. You can only train the common sense of your brain, the intelligence. You can't train your brain to take power. So all we do is we condition the body, we condition the back, we condition the arms, we condition the neck, the areas that are likely to get struck. At all costs, you protect your head. So you'll see these kind of elements. Um, they're not full power, not com complete total power. We do train with bare fists onto the body too, because that's what you're going to be confronting. Um, you're also going to be see some just some shadow sparring and the shadow sparring what you're trying to do is just let your imagination, your imagination go wild. If you're looking at modern training techniques we call it visualization. So in modern psychology, modern sports sciences and such like in sports psychology they'll be referring to something called visualization. Visualization to me is an intellectualized way of saying imagination. Your eyes don't actually see, they actually relay light. It's your brain that makes a picture of that. And so shadow sparring is a very, very important element in any martial art training. And what you're trying to do is let your brain see the moves. Your brain draws patterns, your brain, your brain draws neural links. And what you do is you take that to the stage where you can recognize those shapes in a moving and dynamic situation with a person. And your brain will respond much more freely and much more quickly. Everybody does this. It doesn't matter what you do from traditional boxing, shadow sparring, to martial art patterns of the highest extreme where they're visualizing someone in front of them. We have our instructor's training sessions every month. The idea of the instructor's training session is to keep the standards high, to make sure that any technical points are covered, to encourage people to, to teach them how to communicate, how to hold a class, you know, basically all the qualities that a person needs. Instruction is about helping others, that's what you're there for. No instructor in his right mind is there just for himself. He's not. He may be doing it for his living, but his only way to really genuinely earn a living and continue to earn a living is to be honest to your students. And the idea is to get your students as good as possible. My dream is to make my students better than myself. Of course, every instructor, any coach in any field will want that. Um, at the end of the day, they're very, very talented. You see my senior student, Mark Phillips, um, just basically giving me a hard session against this tree here. You've seen him sparring with me and working with me. He's a very talented martial art, amazing martial art control. He covers most of the sort of like uh, North London area now and teaches there and is actually doing quite well and well respected indeed. Um, I, I find it just an admirable quality that these people who come and follow me around the country, people coming from Lowestoft and Norfolk and Suffolk and Hertfordshire, Birmingham and areas like this, and they're coming down to train with us and have a good spirit and a good manner. Some of these guys can truly fight, they can really do their stuff, but at the end of the day they've stayed nice guys. 
it's okay to try and for a violent situation, but you don't want to get into a violent person's head and lose your own personality and lose your own character. So to me, these instructor sessions keep a level head on people. They give people skills, they give people knowledge, they give people the qualities that it takes to pass this information across to others. And if that's what we want to do, we want to spread Wing Chun, we want to make it a style to be recognised. We have to have ability, but we have to be able to express that ability. That is the most important thing, not just by beating people up, not by fighting, surely, but by communication. This is the ultimate skill in this world today. behind the turning of the wooden dummy is you try to turn efficiently by pivoting your centre line. It would be incorrect to switch shift from side to side because you're under pressure if you start to move your body weight to the outside and instinctively people start to follow you and press in that direction. So when you're trying to turn powerfully you turn by pivoting along a central axis so your feet hold the ground. If you want to move then you would step out but still turn back in. What you mustn't do is turn away and shift and fall away. Obviously your upper body now is moving away and you could very easily lose your balance. So what you try to do is grip and adapt to the stance, Yi Chi Kim Young Ma, grip and hold and turn as you can see the ground is being pulled up as you turn. You're pivoting on your heels so your centre line has the central axis of power. So if I was to shift and turn and lean away then of course I get away from my opponent but the problem is if he presses on any pressure at a diagonal he can knock me off balance too easily. So the idea is to turn in and not to lean away. If I want to move away, I'll use my legs and not my upper body for a step and turn and deliver the power back in. This will give me the distance and also the ability to turn powerfully back into my opponent. So when you're turning, hold and grip the stance. When you want to move, move efficiently by pulling, adapting, and we can start to move and pull, moving powerfully around the leg and strongly. So then we start to have footwork coming in angles. There are a few different angles in between this. So you'll be 45, straight, move, 45 again. Learning to use the dummy. The dummy's arms are angled away from you, so if you get the angle wrong, you'll actually be pushed off balance. So you're encouraged to move correctly to the appropriate angle on a wooden dummy. Foot should always go into the lead leg and actually be pressing. So you have a strong bridge into your opponent.
Oh, <laughs> 